The final, the purse is $250,000, the distance is a mile, and the track is fast as the horses get ready to come onto the track. And the one horse is Kitty Wake, owned by Pegasus 85, trained by Pat Skimura, and driven by Ray Schnitger. The question is, how long will she lead? An eighth of a mile, a quarter of a mile, was dead game second to Ambro Feather in the Clare final last week. Uh, is up against it here, though. The two horse, the queen, Ambro Feather, owned by the Armstrong brothers, trained by Roger Copas, and driven by John Copas. Has won 16 of her last 18, one of those losses by a nose at Mohawk to Matt Scooter. Other loss was here at Yonkers, is the queen of her field. The three horse, the king, Matt Scooter, owned by Gordon and Illa Rumpel and Charles Juravinsky, trained by Harry Poulton and driven by Michelle Lachance. Matt Scooter is Mr. Everything, retires after tonight's race, one of the greatest pacers of all time. We'll go for a stakes record here. Who knows, Gary, maybe even a track record. Nothing Matt Scooter does surprises me anymore. The four horse is Casino Cowboy, owned by Nick Colinaro and Jeff Picaro, trained by Nick Colinaro and driven by Gerald Sarama. Unlike Matt Scooter, will be back to race another day, and that will probably be his better day because Casino Cowboy is overmatched here. The five horses, Jaguar Spur, owned by Roy Davis in the Barberry Farm, trained by Charles Stillings and driven by William Buddy Gilmore. Jaguar Spur has been a prolific winner during his career, will again attempt to retire after today's race. I think we'll probably retire on a sour note, which is too bad because this horse is a champion. The six horse, Running Mead Lobel, owned by Bayama Farms and Mo Norman Mandu, trained and driven by Yves Fillion. Was strong last week, beaten two lengths by Matt's here at Yonkers, one of the very few horse that has beaten Matt, but the sixth position doesn't help. The seven horse is Rumpus Hanover, owned by F. Ian Smith and P.E.I., trained by Fred Grant and driven by Billy O'Donnell. Also has danced many of the big dances this year. Post position kills any chance he would have in this race, though. And the eight-horse Sandman Hanover, owned by the LPG Standard Bread Bonnie Castle Stable, trained by Ken Sieber and driven by Hervé Fillion. Hervé gets much the worst of the draw here. We'll probably look to find some cover, but can he outkick Matt Scooter to the finish line? Can anybody outkick Matt Scooter? We'll find out in a couple of moments. It is the race of the year. From one to eight, the best field in harness racing in any race in 1989. It is the Houghton Memorial Final. We'll have it for you next on Fall Racing 89. And myself or Jody would not have minded having some of that action that you just saw. Let's take a look at the odds. Kitty Wake at 26 to 1. Armbro Feather at 4 to 1. And Matt Scooter, the prohibitive favorite, at 2 to 5. Casino Cowboy, long shot, 28 to 1. Horse number 5, Jaguar Spur at 12 to 1. Running Me Lobel, 23 to 1. Rumpus Hanover, the long shot. Sam Man Hanover getting some play at 7 to 1. Let's go down to the winner's circle and Frank Trucker for his analysis of this Houghton final. Gary, thanks very much. I'm kind of glad we keep seeing Matt Scooter because he keeps me from going 0 for 3 every week. Uh, obviously, I'm going to pick him. I picked him the last three weeks, but let me look a little bit at the strategy of the race. I think you've got speed from the rail in Kitty Wake, speed from the 5 in Jaguar Spur, and speed from the 6 in Running Mead Lobel. This will make it a little bit difficult, I think, for Ombro Feather because John Copas has to decide how he wants to rate the horse. If he tries to leave, he's going to see a lot of speed up front, may only be able to drop in third. If he doesn't leave and pulls first over, well, guess who's going to be behind him? Matt Scooter breathing right down his neck. I think the race shapes up well for Matt Scooter, especially since he drew the best post he can possibly get, post three. I think he's going to retire a winner. Up to you, Gary. Thank you very much, Frank. Now, Jody, you talked last night to Michelle Lachance. He talked about a race at Mohawk Raceway several weeks ago. He said that he had a shipping problem, may have been a little tired. He's been at Yonkers all month. The horse is in tip-top shape. Uh, Gary, it's tough to believe that I'm going to go with Frank Drucker again, but not even Frank Drucker can uh, diminish anything that Matt Scooter can and already has accomplished. And the horse that he is afraid of, the mare, Armbro Feather, who will be racing in Canada after tonight, will retire U.S. appearances after the ninth race 
your thoughts. Lachance actually thought he lost to Armbro Feather in that race at Mohawk. We showed it to you earlier. It was the shortest of nose victories. But also, as Frank said, uh, Armbro Feather is going to have to work out a pretty perfect trip to here because the way the horses have drawn and the strategy of the race is working against her. We've mentioned that race from October 29th. Let's take a look at the stretch of that race, and you will see Matt Scooter getting up. Matt Scooter winning by the shortest of noses. As you see, Armbro Feather coming up on the outside, Jody. Armbro Feather and John Copas on the outside. Mike Lachance and Matt Scooter on the inside. Feather, Scooter, it's Scooter by the shortest of noses, as I've said before. And Lachelle Lachance told you last night that he was very worried about Armbro Feather and thought he might have lost. And he thought that he lost that race, got the perfect pocket trip did Armbro Feather got up by a very very small amount I'm not sure if Michelle Lachance will have to use the whip quite as vigorously tonight to get Matt Scooter in front let's now go down to the winner's circle where George Anthony has a very special guest thank you very much Gary my special guest in the winner's circle is why this race is named after one of the most important people the sport has ever seen the backbone of the sport Billy Houghton and with me is Billy Houghton Jr. welcome tonight Billy thank you very much Billy uh, your dad he was really loved in this sport and he was the backbone of what made harness racing. And it's such a, it must be such an honor for you to be here tonight and, and have a race of this caliber named after him. Well, I almost grew up here at Yonkers. I mean, when I was born, my dad was in the sixth race and uh, the starter behind the gate said, Billy, you got a boy. So I'm glad to be back anytime I can come back. The Roonies are great people and Yonkers Raceway is a nice place. The Houghton family is involved in the game even now. Uh, your brother, uh, Cammy, what's he been doing? Cammy's a judge for the New York State Racing and Wagering Board. He's located at Monticello Raceway now, and he lends a little edge that some of the judges in the past may not have had because they haven't been drivers or trainers, so it's, uh, it's good for the business. Tommy Houghton, another brother of yours in the family, and uh, where is he doing now in harness racing? Uh, Tommy's an outstanding trainer and driver. He's always been good at anything that he's ever tried, never wanted to be second, and uh, he's just a, a good kid with uh, a good following, and I think he'll always do well. If Billy Houghton was here in the winner's circle tonight, he'd be very proud of this guy, and he'd be proud of this race that's named after him tonight. I think it's going to be a real classic matchup. Back upstairs to you, Gary. Thank you, George. Let's take a look at two other horses who comprise this field. Sandman Hanover, the winner of the Messenger, has the eight hole. Top three-year-old this year, but was hurt by the draw. Hervé Villon, the best here at Yonkers, has already won some on the card. Should be interesting to see what kind of strategy he uses. And we cannot forget the five-horse Jaguar Spur, who will also be retiring after the race. And Jaguar and Mats have battled before at Yonkers. That they have, Gary, and during the month of November, Mats has owned Yonkers. But earlier in the year, Jaguar Spur had been able to beat Mats had been able to do so with speed. A lot of speed in this race. Jaguar Spur took last week off. The qu question is, is, was he freshened by that week off, or is it going to hurt his chances here? A true champion at the sport of harness racing, but he's up against a real true champion in Matt Scooter here. Let's take one last look at the odds, and as we do, Jody, give me your analysis of how you think this race is going to develop. It will be Kitty Wake going out and uh, going as fast as she can for as long as she can, 35 to 1. Uh, the betting public doesn't think she can hold on. Umbro Feather at 5 to 1, of course, the best filly that we will see. Uh, Matt Scooter, 1 to 5, no surprise there. Casino Cowboy, 40, 1 to 1, will be trailing throughout, I would think, the majority of the race. On the outside, Jaguar Spur will go to the lead as quickly as possible. Running me low bell will also try and press the early pace. Rumpus Hanover, probably a bargain at 75 to 1, but won't be winning. And Sandman Hanover, uh, it depends on where Hervey wants to go, to the front or dropping in. It's all going to be dictated by Matt Scooter. As we take a look at Matt Scooter and Michelle Lachance, and we have a slight delay before the race of the year gets underway. And we mentioned this before, Jody, why we're saying this is the race of the year and why we are is because of the depth of the field and the quality of the competition. And that, in our estimation, makes this the best race that we have seen, not only on summer or fall racing 89, but throughout the 89 season. Give the credit to Yonkers Raceway. They put this race together so that it is a battle between older horses, between the males and the females, between the top three-year-olds. You're seeing the best of the best here, and the best of them, all, of them all, of course, is Matt Scooter. As you take a look at the staggered starting gate, and just to fill you in on uh, how this race was drawn. Armbro Feather and Kitty Wake drew for one and two because they are the only two mares. Everybody else drew for three through eight. Matt Scooter, luck of the draw, got three. And according to Harry Poulton, horse of the year, I don't think there's any question he's the horse of the year. And will he be giving any instructions to Mike Lachance? Well, I haven't given him instructions in any races, and he's made over 2.8 million, so I don't plan on starting that practice now. 
The purse is $250,000. Matt Scooter, Jaguar Spur, Ronnie Mead Lobel, all in their final performances of a great career. This is the end of an era in harness racing. Let's sit back and watch. Let's go upstairs to track announcer Bob Meyer. Thank you, Gary. The big one of the year. They're all on the gate. And they're off. Running me low the outside tries for the lead. Matt Scooter in between horses second. Kitty Wake along the rail third. Ombro Feather towards the inside fourth. Casino Cowboy fifth. Sam Ann Hanover the outside sixth. Around the turn down the back stretch. Kitty Wake has the lead now by two and a half lengths. Running me low drops in second. Matt Scooter the outside third. Ombro Feather on the rail fourth. Gap between half lengths. Casino Cowboy fifth. Sam Ann Hanover the outside sixth. Jaguar Spur seventh. And Rumpus Hanover trails the field eighth. Approaching the quarter pole, Matt Scooter on the outside to take over the lead. Kitty Wake back to second. The quarter time is 27 and 4. At the paddock turn the first time, Matt Scooter in front by length, Kitty Wake second. Gap at two and a half lengths, Running Me Low Bell third, Ombro Feather fourth, Casino Cowboy on the rail fifth, Sam and Have alongside six, Jack Boss the outside seventh, and Rumpus Hanover trails a field eight. As they come by the stands the first time, Matt Scooter shows the way by a little more than length, Kitty Wake second, Ombro Feather rushing up on the outside third. Running me, Lobel goes right with her full. Half time is 57 seconds flat. Around the clubhouse turn the final time. Matt Scooter in front by a little more than length. Kitty Wake on the rail second with Ombro Feather alongside third. Running me, Lobel has the cover on the outside fourth. Casino Cowboy on the rail fifth. Sand Manhattan alongside sixth. Jaguar Sport three wide on the outside seventh. Rumpus Hanover was eighth. Down the back stretch. Matt Scooter draws out with three length advantage on both feather the outside second kitty wake on the rail third running me bell alongside fourth three quarters 125 and three around the far turn it's matt scooter in front now by four lengths with ombro feather second running me bell alongside third two and a half lengths back to kitty wake fourth they approach the head of the stretch it's all matt scooter in front by five ombro feather second running me bell third through the stretch Matt Scooter draws away, five, six lengths, Ombro Feather second, Matt Scooter in front and drawing away. Here's the finish, it's all Matt Scooter, what can you say? By about six or so, Ombro Feather second, running me low belt third. The time, one, 53 and four, let's go back to Gary and Jody. You know, in football they say a runner smells the goal line, in basketball they say you can smell the hoop. Matt Scooter smelled that finish line, a time of 153 and four, which obliterates the track record for a four-year-old horse held by on the road again of 154 and three. And Jody, I have never heard the crowd applaud a horse as the horse came to the finish line. They knew he was the winner. They just started applauding. Gary, we talked about how this was the best, best horse race of the year, the deepest competition. Well, the greatest horse ever just buried the deepest field we've ever seen. Matt Scooter got to an easy lead, uh, went by like they were standing still as he has every race in Yonkers here in the month of November, and then just drew away from a talented and deep field. We saw a record-setting performance. We saw an all-time historic performance in harness racing here tonight. Now, Matt Scooter may not have the greatest gate speed, but I'll tell you one thing. He took the lead around the quarter, and that's all that he would need. And we'll take a look at that one more time. As you see Kitty Wake in the lead, and you see on the outside the three horse, Michelle Lachance and Matt Scooter. And Kitty Wake is certainly a talented speed horse, can always set good fractions. Running Mead Lobel got out quickly, was also pressing the early pace. I hate to repeat myself, but goes by them like they're standing still. Michael Chance and Matt Scooter knew at this point they had the race. A lot of people knew ahead of time before the race even started that this was going to be no contest, and that's exactly the way that it finished up. No contest as he was drawing away from the field. And let's take a look at the stretch. A secretariat-like performance, if I may use that analogy, as Michelle Lachance and Matt Scooter draw away. And earlier in this race, you saw Michelle Lachance really let it out. You saw that he was going for the record. I turned to Jody and I said, Jody, this is going to be a record. And at the quarter mile, uh, three-quarter time, 125, I turned to Gary and said, what's the track record here? When he told me 154 and change, I said, this one is going by the boards. Michael Chance could have just sit in the bike and win this one easily, but he know he had a chance for a record-setting performance, so he's still urging Matt Scooters on. Doesn't take much urging with this horse. He is a true champion's champion. The winner's circle is mobbed literally mobbed but inside the winner's circle there's some room to breathe let's go down to george anthony thank you very much gary these people by the winner's circle are applauding this great animal he is the horse of the year tell him big boy yeah he's, he can talk too gary <laughs> he's the horse of the year after tonight he equals the track record mike he's just a phenomenal horse
Well, there's so many nice words that have been said about him. I just, he's just unbelievable. Just a special, very special animal. He's talking to me again, Gary. What are you saying here, big boy? You know what that means in horse language, Gary? He says, I blew him away. I'm horse of the year. Matt Scooter with a great performance here at Yonkers and a track record performance, and you can take it back upstairs. Thank you, George. And Matt certainly likes the microphone and George Anthony. And I'll tell you, the, the track apron is just mobbed with people at Yonkers Raceway, as I, I just mentioned. And they just applauded when the horse was coming around. And there's going to be official retirement ceremonies following the ninth race. But you see right there Charles Juravinsky and Harry Poulton exchanging congratulations. And let's go down to George Anthony, who has the victorious trainer, Harry Poulton. Thank you once again, Gary. In the winner's circle, we got Charles Jurovinsky. He's getting a, a big kiss to his trainer, Harry Poulton. Harry, he's just a phenomenal horse. You've done a great job with this horse in his career. Uh, he's a hell of a horse. He makes my job a lot easier than everybody thinks. On a cold night like this, to have a performance like this, uh, how do you feel right now? Great. He's just a monster. No way of explaining another than that. Harry, you've got horse of the year here. I'm sure of it. How could they deny him? Where's Charles Jurovinsky? Charles, where are you here? I know Charles is in the winner's circle. Big happy winner's circle here tonight and a beautiful crystal. Billy Houghton Jr. to my left. Harry Poulton's all smiles. Nobody kissed me in here tonight, Gary, but this is the horse of the year. He cannot be denied here at Yonkers Raceway tonight, winning the Houghton final. Back upstairs. Maybe if we put a three on your head, George, I would kiss you also as you take a look at the crystal and Billy Houghton Jr. and Mike Lachance. And let's take a look now at the start of this race and you'll see how it developed. And Matt Scooter did not get out to the lead. Kitty Wake did, as we expected from the rail. And then you'll see what developed as the pictures continue the start of the race. As I talked to Mike Lachance last night, I said, Mike, do you have any strategy going into the race? He says, no, I will let the other horses dictate my strategy. Kitty Wake, of course, he knew was going up the rail. Uh, it was running me low bell coming out quickly from the sixth spot. Mike knows that Matt Scooter's gate speed is not always the greatest, but when you have the kind of speed that we'll see upcoming here, gate speed becomes irrelevant. He will drop in number three and then just go by running Mead Lobel and also Kitty Wake without much effort, easily makes the lead at 27 and change, and from there it was pretty much history. I had said at the beginning of November when we started Fall Racing 89 that Matt Scooter was looking to make this a November to remember. Well, not only did he make it a November to remember for himself and his trainer and his owners, but he certainly made it, Jody, one for all harness racing fans in just a record-shattering performance in this, his final race. And the harness racing fans kick back and enjoy what they saw here tonight. Uh, Matt Scooter just buried a very talented and very deep field. And like myself, like yourself, Gary, I was surprised by the way the fans reacted here tonight. They knew how important a race they were seeing, how history-setting a race performance they were seeing. Matt Scooter, the greatest of all time. Now, there were no place or show, but there was win wagering. And there you see it, 240, and the triple 326 returning $42. But the most important number... 153 and 4, a new track record for a four-year-old horse. As you take a look at a very victorious winner's circle, Charles Jurovinsky, Matt Scooter, Billy Houghton Jr., Huey Clark, the groom with Matt Scooter throughout the year. Just a great, great race to finish up Fall Racing 89. So turn your TVs off till next summer when we bring you, that's right, Summer Racing 90 starting on June 2nd. It should be very exciting. So for Matt Scooter, Jody McDonald, Frank Drucker, and George Anthony, I'm Gary Sussman. We'll see you next year on Summer Racing 90. You've been watching Fall Racing 89.